Hi, everybody. Oh my goodness. It's the first Feel Good Friday back for me. <laughs> Hi. Hi to all my YouTube family. I'm so happy to see everybody. Oh my gosh. It's so cool to have you guys already here. I know. I say that all the time. It's just really awesome to see you guys kind of gather and chat amongst yourselves before we get started, which is awesome. Facebook starting to catch up now. Hi, everybody. Welcome in. Hi, Dolly, Norma, Liz, Tracy, Nicole, Stacia, Colleen. <laughs> it's so good to see everybody. And it is so good to be Feel Good Friday. I, this is my favorite day of the week, and I will never get tired of Feel Good Friday shows. Feel Good Friday, for those of you who are unfamiliar with how Feel Good Friday works, our Feel Good Friday shows are easy, instant gratification jewelry in kit form, which means that you can go over to my Etsy shop and you can purchase each one of the kits, including the Maker Mix that you see today, and then I ship those out to you super quick and you can put together the exact pieces that you see here, which is awesome. I do want to apologize <laughs> in advance. I have a cold. I'm like day three in and um, I'm, I feel better, but like I still sound terrible. So I'm sure you can hear the congestion. Um, so my apologies <laughs> for sounding like I'm talking through a paper towel tube because <laughs> that's what it sounds like to me. Oh, my poor nose, my sinuses, my whole face hurts. But that's all right. We're powering through, right? We're powering through. Uh, there's no way that I could have taken today off to rest. That was just not going to happen. I have Feel Good Friday and I am going to um, the Elton John concert tonight. So like, I don't have time to be sick. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. So here we are, right? Here we are. Oh my goodness. So let's talk about our Feel Good Friday show. I have seven things to show you. Seven. I always, it's so funny because every week when I'm getting ready for our Feel Good Friday shows, I always send Kathy messages and I'm like, I don't think I'm going to get the kits done in time. I don't think I have enough kits made. And then by Thursday, I have like seven things and she's like, really? <laughs> and I do it every single week. You can set your watch by around Wednesday. I start saying, I just don't know if I'm going to get all this finished. <laughs> and fortunately, I get everything. I get everything finished. But um, that doesn't mean that I don't say it every single week. Like she's in the comments. She says every week. That's how she knew I was back to normal. Because I was back in my office and that I, I sent her the message. And I was like, I'm, I'm behind. <laughs> and she was like right back into the routine again. So I got seven things for you guys. And I'm really excited about these because these are like the first kits back. And I I don't know. Sometimes I'm really excited about kits. Other times I'm like, well, they are, they're okay. You know, I really love these. So I hope that you guys love these as well. Yeah, I am. Tonight is the concert. I'm so I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. going to be a good time. I'll take pictures. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. I'm going to turn you guys around and we're going to start with our maker mix. Um, before I get started with the maker mix though, I do want to kind of like remind some of you uh, what the maker mix is all about. Or for those of you who are new, first and foremost, hello and welcome in. We're so glad that you're here. Um, the maker mixes are little bead mixes that I put together. I put together one a week usually. And the maker mixes are things that I don't have enough of to make full kits out of, but I still want to share with everybody. So I put together these little bead mixes and you can buy them and then you can put together a piece of jewelry using your own stuff. You don't have to stick strictly to what's in the maker mix. Um, but then you post a picture of it and your name is automatically entered into a drawing and the name that gets drawn at the end of the month, I send them a goodie bag. And I got to tell you something. I have some really amazing things to add to goodie bags. 
you don't want to miss out. You don't want to miss out. Like I've, I've been going through my own stash. I have some things that Beatalon has sent. I have some things that are just going to be really, really cool. So you don't want to miss out on that opportunity. All you have to do is just make a piece of jewelry. Nobody judges the piece of jewelry. All you got to do is just post a picture of the jewelry that you made with the maker mix. That's all. No judging. We just we just choose a winner at random. All right, so I'm going to turn you guys around. Let's get to it, shall we? I'm ready. So, so ready. All right. Takes me a minute to get readjusted here because things are a little bit, my setup, oops, sorry, you guys. My setup is a little bit different than what my setup previously has been. I am so sorry for my nose. <laughs> All right, so this is our little mi maker mix for the week. This one is called Twitter Pated. You guys, I'm, I don't know. You remember the Bambi movie? I still can't watch the whole thing, but I love Bambi and Thumper and oh my gosh, you guys remember that? They were talking about in spring, everybody's Twitter painted. So that's the name of this maker mix. It's got a really cool ceramic bunny. There's also a little metal bunny bead in here. There are some check glass flowers. There are some check glass tulips. Lots of rondelles in here. Check glass rondelles, check glass bicones, but then also some glass as well. It's just a really, really pretty kind of pastel mix. Now you guys know uh, we've got Easter coming up right around the corner. You still got time. I feel like I'm a little behind with Easter since I was off uh, for about two weeks, but I'm really trying to make up for it. So I promise you, if you if you get this Easter mix or if you get the um, the Easter egg earrings that I'm about to show you, I'll send them to you quick so you'll have them in time. I promise. I promise. So that's our little maker mix for the week. This one's called Twitter Painted. Super, super cute. I hope you love it. Um, Monica says, do we get the maker mix from you? Yes, you do. You can grab it in my Etsy shop. All right. So, <laughs> yeah, Liz says, I can't watch that movie either. I think it ruined my childhood. Right? See? Same. That's exactly the way I feel about it. All right. So, I have Easter egg earrings for you guys. These kits come in two different colors. We're going to put one of them together. But I want to show you the, the ones that are already made. Look how pretty. I picked the blue. To be honest, I have these Easter egg check glass beads in a bunch of different colors, but I picked the blue because blue is always popular. So this is the light blue. Really, really beautiful. And then the other option is the dark blue. We're going to put the dark blue one together. We'll put together the mate for this one. Super, super easy, but they're so pretty. They're so, so pretty. And I am obsessed with these Easter egg check glass beads. And I honestly had a really hard time getting my hands on them. Like, I don't know why. I, I don't know if it's just, I, I don't know if it's just because of where I live or what, but it was hard to get enough of these to make kits out of. But I bought enough so that I have some for next year too. So, uh, yeah. All right. So we're going to put this together super, super easy, right? That's what Feel Good Friday is all about. It is instant gratification jewelry at its finest. So we're going to take a head pin, okay? We're going to thread on a small bicone. We're going to thread on a bead cap and we're going to thread on our Easter egg check glass bead and then we're going to top that off with just a little metal bead. Now why did I add the metal bead? Because the the inlay color here is gold and if I leave this off, I, it just feels a little bit unbalanced because all of our silver is on the bottom, but the egg itself is gold. So if I drop that little bead down on top, I know it's just a small, subtle change, but it really does kind of change the entire look. It's those little things. And the reason that I bring it up is because uh, sometimes all you need is just a little extra pop of metal, particularly when you're mixing metals together, which I would consider this mixed metal. Um, even though it's just paint, I, I would consider it a mixed metal because that metallic gold is in there. All right, so I'm going to do a wrapped loop here. I'm just grabbing the wire right where it is exiting the bead, and I'm going to give it a bend. Okay, and we're going to do a wrapped loop coming in with my round nose pliers. We're going up and over the top barrel of the pliers. We're going to rotate and we're going to take the wire over to the other side to close that up. And then I'm going to wrap. Now, you got to be careful here because 
you've only got so much wire to wrap with. Uh, just, just take your time and go slow with your wrap. Okay. So it is a little short because we've got a lot of beads on this head pin. You may have to kind of turn it around, guide it with your pliers. All right, just like that. And then you can see I have that tiny little speck of wire back here that's sticking out. And I'm going to trim that off. Okay. So there's the bottom. Now you don't have to add the extra bicone to this because it does add length to this overall earring. You can skip that part and just put the ear wire on if you want to. But I do like the extra pop of the sparkle in here. So I'm going to take an eye pin. I'm going to open that up and I'm going to thread that onto the wrapped loop that we just created. I'm going to close that back and I'm going to drop a bicone down on top of that. This one is a little bit bigger than the one on the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to do another wrapped loop and we're going to add our ear wire and these will be complete. So again, just bending over our pliers. We're going to come in with our round nose pliers. We're going up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And then we're going to wire wrap in that space between the loop we just created and the top of our bicone. Tidy that up a little bit with my pliers. Okay, and then I'm just gonna trim off the excess and add our ear wire. And trim as close as you can and then use your pliers to kind of tuck in. Okay. Are those all so, so, I really love them. I really, really do. All right, so I'm just going to add my ear wire. All right, so both of these kits are in the shop. They're the same listing. You just got to pick between uh, the blue, which are these, and then the light blue which honestly, it's a really hard choice. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love them both. I think I think they're both pretty awesome. And guys, I know that like we're, we're right here at the last minute for Easter. I do have, like I mentioned, I do have these Easter eggs in different colors. I could probably do some more kits next week, but I can't guarantee that they would be uh, in, you know, that you would get them before Easter, but I would. So just keep it in mind. Um, I have like a really pretty kind of cocoa brown color, um, a creamy white. I think there's some green. I don't remember what the other colors are, but, um, if you're interested in the eggs and other colors, just let me know. Okay. All right. So I'm going to set these to the side. Okay. Now I'm going to show you another pair of easy earrings. I love these as well. These are so cool. I, I love earrings. I'm just an earrings person. And when they're easy, even better. These are super cool because they have these melon check glass beads, these melon drops, and they are metallic, which means they have that beautiful color shift between purple, green, and blue, and like little flashes of pink. I really, really love these. So we're going to put a pair of these together super quick. And then I'm going to show you a really cool mismatched pair of earrings that we're going to put together. So again, we're going to start out exactly the same way we did with the others. We're going to start with a head pin. We're going to thread on a bead cap. And then we're going to thread on our melon teardrop check glass bead. Okay. And we're going to do a wrapped loop. But we, we're going to wire wrap that directly to our little connector here. Okay, so I'm going to start that wrapped loop. They do kind of look like eggplants. <laughs> I agree. All right, so I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers, take the wire up and over. But before I do the wire wrapping, I'm going to take this and I'm going to use my chain nose pliers and just open it up slightly so that I can go ahead and thread it directly on to our little connector. Just kind of wiggle those two together. And then I like to use my bent chain nose pliers to hold onto that loop just to get it out of the way. And again, we're going to wire wrap. We have a short amount of wire here because our melon bead is, it's a big one, but I'm not mad about it. I think they're pretty awesome. So again, just kind of want to coax your wire around and then whatever's left over you want to get in there and just trim that little bit off. 
get in there as close as you can and whatever is left, just kind of tuck it with your pliers, okay? Now to top this off, you know I had to add more sparkle. So I'm gonna add an eye pin, just like with our Easter eggs. And actually, you know what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna use a jump ring, I forgot. You use a little jump ring here as our go-between. So the jump ring is gonna go in the top of our little kind of cross component, little connector. Then I'm gonna attach that to our eye pin. And I'm gonna close that, whoops, I'm gonna close that back. Okay, I'm gonna thread on a little bicone. This bicone has that kind of purple, same kind of flash that the melon bead has. And we're gonna do another wrapped loop and add the ear wire. Super, super simple. Instant gratification jewelry uh, at its finest with earrings. Just stacking up your favorite things. That's really my favorite way to do earrings because you can instantly have something to go with your outfit, right? And I think it's safe to say that most of us here have a uh, extensive bead stash and could almost always find something in the right color to go with whatever we're wearing, right? Uh, but if not, and you love these, exactly the ones I have here, grab the kits over in my Etsy shop. Uh, it's a great way to support me and my business and uh, allows me to continue to come and do not just our Feel Good Friday shows, but our, our other free shows on Tuesdays as well. All right, so I'm just gonna add an ear wire to this. Now these were the two easiest kits of the entire Feel Good Friday show, but nothing else is super hard. That's <laughs> just so you know. Don't walk away now. <laughs> we're just getting started. We're just getting started. All right, so there are those super, super cool Love them. Love, love, love. All right. Let me set those to the side. All right. So the next thing we're going to put together is a pair of mismatched earrings. And I actually have to pull up the picture because I want to be sure <laughs> that I put these together the correct way. These are so cool. Mismatched earrings are never going to go out of style. I, they just aren't because they're so fun and whimsical. And these have these beautiful AB. Do you see that flash on those? The AB flash butterflies. They're so, so pretty. So to set these up, now I normally just make one earring, but because these are mismatched, I'm actually going to do both so that you can see exactly how to do these. But on one of them, you're going to do, and you don't have to do them this way if you don't want to, but if you want to keep them mismatched, you're going to do your butterfly. You're going to do a decorative ring here and then a check glass round. That's also clear with that AB finish. That's going to hang in the center. We're going to take a piece of chain from that. This one's actually already done. It's a piece of chain with a jump ring to a decorative ring and a little tiny pearl. We're going to hang that from the bottom. So that's going to be earring A, right? Earring B is going to be very, very similar to this, but it's going to kind of go the opposite direction. So we're going to take our little pearl. Okay, I'm just laying it out before we actually execute here. Our little pearl, and that's going to attach to a jump ring. I'm sorry, <laughs> our decorative ring here. Okay, then we're going to do chain coming down from that. So it's kind of the opposite, right? I mean, it actually is the opposite. Not kind of, it is the opposite. <laughs> we're going to do our butterfly. Okay, and then we're going to do our ring with our check glass bead in between there. Okay, so that's going to be the configuration. Now, again, if you don't like mismatched, you can just pick which direction you want these to go and make both of them that way. Also, this is a long earring. It's not necessarily a shoulder duster, but this is um, a long earring. You can always adjust this by removing the chain. That's going to that's gonna make this a whole inch shorter. Um, or you can just cut the chain just to make it a little bit shorter. It's totally up to you, um, but you've got options here, okay? All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to actually start right here in the middle with our ring and our check glass. So I'm gonna thread this on to a head pin and we're gonna start a wrapped loop and we're gonna add that wrapped loop directly to our decorative ring here. Okay. So we're gonna go up and over. 
<laughs> Susie says it's a Sarah duster with lots of bling. I would agree with that. <laughs> it is in fact. All right. So now I'm going to take this, um, I'm going to take the tail end of that wire. I'm going to slide it through the middle of our decorative ring. And then I'm just going to kind of wiggle because you do have to wiggle just a little bit to, to snap those two together. And we're going to hold on to that with our bent chain nose pliers. It just keeps the pliers out of the way. And we're going to wire wrap. Okay, I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off. And tuck in whatever's left. Okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add our butterfly to this wrapped loop because otherwise our wrapped loop makes our bead kind of hang right at the edge of that, that ring. But if I use it as my connection to my butterfly, it's actually going to pick this up a little bit. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take an eye pin and I'm going to open up that eye and then I'm going to attach that to that loop just like that. So now you can see when I'm holding it and gravity is doing its thing, you can see now that bead has plenty of room to hang from that, from that ring instead of sitting right there on the edge, because this, this eye pin is pulling up on it just enough so that it has plenty of room to wiggle around. We're going to thread on our butterfly and then we're just going to do a wrapped loop on the top of our butterfly here. I know we've kind of started in a weird spot for our earring, but I just feel like putting it together in this, in this order just makes a little bit more sense. Okay, up and over, rotate. We're gonna take the wire over to the other side. Now you do have to kind of be mindful of the butterfly's wings. You're kind of trying to work around them because they do kind of come up a little bit. You can see, because they have that kind of V shape. So just kind of watch out for that as you're doing your, your wraps here. Okay. Clean that up a little bit. I do want to turn, make sure that the rings or the loops rather on your butterfly are both facing you. That's going to make a big difference in the way everything hangs. Okay. Now I'm going to come and trim off the excess here. Now, if you wanted to just leave it like this, this is a pretty earring, right? I mean, it's pretty. Doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be this crazy long earring that I'm putting together. But you now, if you want it to be, that you've got all the stuff in the kit to do it this way. Okay, so I'm going to use a little four millimeter jump ring as my go between. I'm just going to open that up. I'm going to thread that onto our piece of chain. Now, I know I did this in advance. But just so you can see when you're ready to put yours together, there's another four millimeter jump ring at the end of this chain attached to a solid ring. And then a wrapped loop attaches the pearl here on the bottom. Okay, just trying to save some time, um, but it's pretty straightforward. Close this back. Okay, so the first earring, earring A, if you will, is ready to go. We're just going to add the ear wire to it. Now we're going to make the mate in the opposite direction, but you can see how this one works out. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so now for the other one, we're again going to start down here at the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to start with a check glass bead. I just find that it's it's much easier to start with your check glass in your ring. So same thing, wrapped loops. I'm coming in, bending the wire. I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers, the wire up and over. Yeah, if you guys are having trouble finding the shop, you can go to Etsy and type in 13 crows and it comes up or Nicole is posting all the links and Colleen is uh, posting all the links. <laughs> Tim, Tim says long earrings get caught in my beard. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys, Tim is one of the funniest people that I know and that's not, that's no joke. <laughs> He's a funny, funny funny person. Oh my goodness. But yeah, you can follow the links that Nicole and Colleen are posting to go directly to things. Um, 
<laughs> she just posted it again. <laughs> oh man. Or you can just go over to Etsy. And I think if you just type in uh, 13 crows, it'll come up or you can just type in my name. I think sometimes if you type in my name, it comes up too. All right. So we've got, <laughs> we've got the bottom here. We're going to attach our butterfly to this. So I'm going to open that up. And again, I'm threading that onto the loop of the wrapped loop here, because that's going to help to pull that bead up so it's got plenty of room to swing inside that decorative ring. We're gonna add our butterfly to the top, okay? And then we're gonna do our wrapped loop on the top of it. And again, you just have to be careful of those butterfly wings. <clears throat> Thank you, Christine. Christine says she loves this design. I do too. I do too. I think these are perfect for spring and they have just enough sparkle to still be me. <laughs> I always have to have a little sparkle. I have on a lot of sparkle today and I'm not, I'm nowhere near done. Like the concert's not until later. So obviously I'm not completely blinged out with all of the sparkle, but I'm going hard with the sparkle tonight. You have to, it's Elton John, right? I don't have feathers to wear. So I'm, I'm going to be wearing, uh, I'm going to be wearing lots of sparkle instead. All right. So I'm going to use a four millimeter jump ring, kind of building this one from the bottom up. I'm going to attach that to our wrapped loop on the top of our butterfly, our little chain piece. And I pre-cut all the chain for you guys. So you don't have to worry about that. I'm going to thread on. I'm not going to thread anything on. I'm going to close this jump ring. I don't know what I was thinking. Okay. So now... I'm going to use another four millimeter jump ring here. I'm going to attach that to the top of our chain. And then I'm going to attach that to our solid ring. Okay. Now I want, I want that little pearl. Cause remember there's a little pearl down here at the bottom. I want that little pearl up here. So I'm going to take, a pearl. I'm going to thread it onto a head pin and then I'm going to attach it to that solid ring just by wire wrapping it directly to it. Oh, I will definitely take pictures, Wanda. No worries there. All right. So we're going up and over, rotate, take the wire over, and I'm going to attach this directly to that solid ring. So just kind of wiggle the two wires not the two wires, but the ring and the wire together. Now this is going to kind of hang off to the side just a little bit, but I feel like without it, it was just missing something. So I wanted to be sure that since there was a pearl on one of the earrings, that there was definitely a little glass pearl on the other. Colleen says she's going sparkle-less, which means I have to go hard with the sparkle for both of us. <laughs> All right, opening that up, I'm going to attach that to our ear, or I'm going to attach that to our decorative ring here. And these are done. I love these. I think these are super, super cute. They're really pretty for spring. They, uh, You can dress them up, dress them down. I would definitely wear these with my jeans, um, but I would also you know, wear them with a really pretty spring dress. If I were a spring dress kind of person, I'm not really... <laughs> But if I were, right? And again, if you need to adjust these because they're too long, cut the chain or leave the chain out completely. You can still have a really cool pair of mismatched earrings, right? Um, they don't have to be put together the exact same way. Just use the leftovers from your kit for something else, right? All right, so I'm going to sit these to the side because we've got two bracelets and a necklace left. So we've still got a lot of ground to cover before I let you guys go for the day, okay? All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put together a bracelet. We've put together this style bracelet a million times before, but they sell out every single time I make this style and I'm not going to stop. Can't stop. Won't stop. It's not going to happen. <laughs> and I have really awesome things to add to this one. So let me just show you because some of you are like, I don't know what you're talking about. So this is our button clasp bracelet, right? It's just stringing with the button clasp and the leather, but let look at what I've got, I have these amazing tiara cast buttons and these came from our dear friend, Danielle Wicks. 
please go check out Danielle's shop. Check her out as an artist. Check out her Michaels classes. Danielle is an absolute rock star. I do need feather. I need a feather boa for sure. But she sent me these amazing tiara cast pieces. And this is not the only tiara cast piece I have for today. But we're going to do a little a, a clasp with our leather and our tiara cast button. We're going to add a bell bead to that. And we're going to hang a Z bead from it. So I've got two of these agate Z beads. Okay. Now the rest of this, I'm just going to kind of lay this out because it's pretty much just straight stringing uh, with a little bit of wire wrapping involved here. Okay. So I have these beautiful uh, check glass, these kind of textured bicones. So we're going to do textured bicones, red adventurine, and in between each one of those, we're going to put a little jump ring that has two little check glass drucks. Look at those little baby druck beads. Just to give it a little dangle, because you guys know I have to do those things because I'm crazy like that. Um, but you, you seem to not mind my crazy, so I, that's why I just keep going. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to lay this out, right? And we are going to wire wrap some of these little drucks together, but just to kind of show you what this bracelet is going to look like. I'm just going to lay everything out. Okay. So it's just a back and forth of the beautiful turquoise check glass and the red aventurine beads. We'll string all this up quick and easy. Okay, so just laying this out, we're almost to the end here. Now also on this bracelet is at the end of it, I added another Z bead because I just couldn't, I just couldn't help myself, except now you guys can't see. <laughs> so on one end of the bracelet, we're going to do these little metal tiara cast beads, these little spacer beads. Okay. So we're going to do a single little metal bead, the tiara cast bead, another Z bead to just kind of bring that whole Z bead thing together and that. Okay. So we're going to string this up. And actually the first thing we're going to do, let's do, let's wire wrap these little babies real quick. I just did two of them uh, to save time. Cause like I said, we got a, we got a lot more things to do today. So I'm going to go ahead and take both of these right here and add those to some head pins. Now in your kit, some of you all have small head pins through the entire kit. Some of you have tiny head pins and one larger head pin. Um, or vice versa. Use, I encourage you to use the thinner head pins on your, your little druck beads. Okay. Just because they're so tiny and I'm afraid that the, the smaller head pins are going to slide through our Z bead that we're going to wire wrap here in just a second. So just going to do wrapped loops on all of these. You want to be sure that you do that to all of them. We're just doing two saving time. Okay. Let's do one more. Okay. We'll trim that off. So this one's going to be ready to go. Each one of these, we'll do two of these in between our beads. They're going to go onto one of the larger uh, jump rings that you've got. You just want to thread two of them on and then close your jump rings back. And we're going to thread these on just like we would uh, if they were, you know, a, a regular bead. We're just going to thread our jump rings like that. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and wire wrap this guy too. So we've got a Z bead here and we want to wire wrap him to our bell bead. So I'm going to start my wrapped loop. <laughs> Mary says, God, Zooks, I love it when she twirls a wrapped loop. I do too. It's, it's so satisfying. 
<laughs> it really is. All right, so we're just snapping that on, okay? We're not gonna use a jump ring here uh, just because we need that extra security of that wrap. Jump ring would be okay, but there's always a chance that this bead would get hung on something and it would pull the jump ring open. So I try to avoid that when possible. All right. This color combination is amazing. I really, really love this bracelet style. You guys always love this bracelet style, um, but the color combinations, are, I think, are what make it. All right, so let's put together the little leather part first, just so, because some of you are still wondering, like, what are we doing here? So I'm going to take my piece of leather, and I'm going to thread that decorative ring that we've got, and I'm going to bring it to the middle of our piece of leather. Okay, and watermelon, sorry. I'm going to do an overhanded knot. I love that we're still using that. <laughs> and I'm going to pull that knot down pretty close. Okay. So now I have double leather. I'm going to thread my bail bead right up next to that knot. And then I'm going to do another overhanded knot. I am speaking Wanda's love language. <laughs> and I got the good good with the leather here. This is Leather Cord USA leather, and it's my favorite. It really is good stuff. All right. So now we need to make another knot here and leave ourselves a little space to slide our button in, right? Because that's going to be the way we, this is our clasp. So I'm going to start another overhanded knot away from the other knot that I just made it. And I can adjust it a little bit before I cinch it down. But I want to be sure that I leave enough room for the button, but not too much. Because you don't want it to be so loose that your bracelet's going to come off, right? So kind of eyeball it and then pull to tighten up your knot. And then if you want to trim off your excess here, I'm going to, but I do like to leave like the little fringe behind. Okay. So this is whole, this is one whole side of our bracelet finished. Now we're going to do the stringing part from here. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to take a piece of bead stringing wire. Now, again, all of this stuff is included. Okay. All of this is included in your kit. You don't have to use anything from your own stash. I'm going to take a crimp tube. I'm going to thread that on. And then I'm going to thread on a wire guardian. Okay. I'm going to take the wire up through the wire guardian and then down through the wire guardian. But I'm not going to go through the crimp just yet because we want to hook this to our decorative ring. Okay. So thread that. And then just kind of pull and that'll hook that right in there. Now you can take the tail into that and thread it through your crimp. So no jump ring here either. Okay. Just relying on our, our wire guardian. Okay. Now I'm going to crimp with my crimper tool. I'm going to come in and put that crimp into the back notch of my crimper tool. Make sure the bead string of wire is not crossing inside. Give it a squeeze. You can see when you squeeze it, it further separates those wires within the crimp. I'm going to turn it sideways and put it in the front notch and then squeeze it again. That just makes it a little bit more compact. So you've got yourself a nice little crimp. And if you've crimped properly, you don't have to worry that this is going to come apart. Trim off the excess. Okay. And now we're ready to thread on the beads for our bracelet. We're going to start with our metal bead, just one little metal bead. Tierra cast spacer bead. We're going to thread on our Z bead. Another one of our Tierra cast beads and a metal bead. Okay. So that's going to come down to there. You can see, so the two Z beads are pretty close to each other. Okay. Now we're going to thread on the rest. Let me kind of move everything out of the way here. All right. So we're going to thread on 
one of our check glass beads. Okay. Then we're going to thread on the jump ring with our two little dangles. We're going to thread on an adventuring bead. And then we're just going to repeat that until we have added all of our beads. Okay. And you can see how those are going to hang in between there. So check glass, a dangle, an adventuring bead. Okay. Check glass, our dangles, our gemstone. Lisa says, what exactly is a Z bead? So it's spelled D-Z-I and it's a form of agate, but I'm not entirely sure like what they do to it or how it, how it has those striations in it. They come in a lot of different patterns. I really don't know what it is that they do, but they're super cool. I'm tempted to say that there's some sort of heat treatment, but I honestly don't know. So I don't want to, I don't want to say something that's untrue. I'm sure that there is somebody out there though, that's watching who probably knows. Uh, Sam would probably be a really good uh, candidate for giving us the answer to that as well. If I had to guess, I'm sure he knows. All right, almost done here. Uh oh, <laughs> I have one extra of the dangles. That's okay. So if you, depending on how you thread these on, you may have an extra dangle, and I don't want to just thread it on here because there's no, there's nothing to hold it up against. So I'm just going to sit this one to the side. We're going to go ahead and crimp. Okay, so I'm going to thread on my crimp tube. I'm going to thread on my wire guardian take my wire back down through the wire guardian and through my crimp. And then I'm just going to pull everything. I love them too, Donna. I have no idea how they're made though. I'm, I should probably look that up because <laughs> I have a feeling I'll get asked that question again. I should probably know the answer to that. All right. So pulling everything down. Okay. Just making sure that the bead string and wire is not crossing in there. And we're going to crimp again. And then turn it sideways to put it in front notch. And we're going to trim off the excess. Now, you, if you've got um, crimp covers in your own stash and you want to add them, you absolutely can. Um, I'm, I'm leaving them out. I know I didn't put any in the kits, but you can cover your crimps if you want to. All right. So now the only thing left to do is to add our button. So I'm just going to use a jump ring here. I'm going to thread it onto the shank on the back of our button. And then I'm going to attach that to our wire guardian on one end of our bracelet. Whoops. And if I could hold everything together, I would connect it. Okay. Close that back. All right. So now to put your bracelet on, all you would do is just put it on and then you're just going to slide your button through the little space that you made with your leather. And there you go. Really, really cool. Kind of Southwestern feeling bracelet, right? It's got that really awesome tiara cast button with the steer head on it. The, um, the agate Z beads, the aventurine and the check glass. I just feel like the color combination is really what made this so cool. I know we've done this bracelet design a bunch of different times and different colors, and I, I'm always in love with it. This one might be my favorite, though. And then just that little pop of cream with the druck beads. Really, really cool. So there you go. There's one of the two bracelets in today's show. Okay. I'm going to sit this to the side. We're going to move on. I'm actually going to move on to a necklace before I'm going to save our sparkly bracelet for the very end. Okay. We're going to do a bright or a necklace now that is also kind of in the same, um, kind of style, if you will, of the bracelet that we just made. So this also features a really awesome tiara cast component. It's this awesome pendant, the cactus and the mountain and the sun in the back. Just really, really awesome. So the tiara cast pendant is kind of what I built this entire necklace around. This is another simple stringing project uh, with some howlite beads. So 
just laying it out for you. We're going to center our pendant and we're going to do like, I think seven metal beads here in the center that we're going to hang our pendant from. And I'll of course explain why that is once we get to the stringing part. But again, just going to lay that out. And then we're going to do highlight beads and alternate with some more of the little silver beads. So we're going to do that on each side, kind of building out our necklace here. And again, just simple, simple stringing, nothing hard, but really pretty. This definitely has summertime, it's giving me summertime vibes. Something about Southwestern style jewelry just always kind of makes me think of warmer weather. And I guess that's because it's warm in the, <laughs> in the Southwest. I don't know. I don't know. The logic in my brain, who knows? All right. So that's going to be, we're going to do one, two, three, four, five, six on each side of the halite beads with the little metal beads in between. Okay. And we're going to just use bead stringing wire to string that. We're going to crimp. And then we're going to attach these to some suede lace that we are going to create a lark, lark's head knot over. And that's going to function as the length for each side. So one of them's already done, but I have the other side to do. Okay. Um, Jennifer says, why the odd number in the of the silver in the center? I'm glad you asked. I'm going to explain all that to you here in just a second. So let's get started with our stringing because that's my bead stringing wire piece is a little short hold on I, I picked up the wrong one okay so we're going gonna take our bead stringing wire we're gonna thread on our crimp tube and our wire guardian okay we're gonna go back down Take our bead string of wire through and we're going to crimp and I promise you I'm going to answer those questions in just a second. <laughs> Ooh, I agree. Brenda said it would be really pretty with red coral. I think so too. All right. So I'm going to start stringing. I'm going to start up here. We're going to make our way down here to the pendant and then I'll explain to you why it is that I picked what I picked because it's not just a design choice. It's actually, there's actually a very, very good reason for the beads in the center and why it's an odd number of beads. So I'm just going to thread these on really quickly. Okay. I love the Howlite silver combo. You just can't go wrong with that color combination. Any turquoise and silver goes together. All right, so now we're down here to the part where I have just these silver beads. Now, our pendant, yours, you'll need to go ahead and put onto your oval jump ring, okay? So you get the oval jump ring in there. And I'm gonna thread on all seven of these beads. And these beads right here in the center, not only are they pretty, um, but they serve as a guardian between the bead stringing wire and the jump ring that is on our pendant. And the reason why there is an odd number is because your pendant is going to naturally gravitate with gravity to the center of these beads, right? And because of that, if there is an even number of beads, it may fall between two of those beads, right? Which it still can fall between two of those beads anyway. Um, but what we hope for is when this is hanging, it's actually going to be hanging on that center bead instead of between two. Because what happens is over time, of course, gravity takes over and this jump ring will work its way between those two beads. And then it ends up sitting on that bead stringing wire. And we don't want that. 
That's why we have these beads in the first place, but we have an odd number in the hopes that it's going to detract, right? We're using, um, what are we, we're using psychological tactics with our jump ring here. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We, we, we want it to, to have to sit on the top surface of a bead instead of between the two. And a, a bead will be the center. So if you've got seven, then you've got three on either side. That's That one bead in the middle is hopefully where your pendant is going to end up resting, right? And it's never going to come in contact with the bead stringing wire. And it's not really even going to have an opportunity to wiggle its way between two even numbered beads, right? And get down there and touch it. Because if it does, if it wiggles its way in there, then it creates abrasion between that jump ring and the bead stringing wire. Over time, that's going to wear away that nylon coating that's on your bead stringing wire that's protecting all of those wires that are twisted together. And once that nylon coating gets you know, starts to come apart, uh, then your, your bead string and wire will start to fray and your, um, your necklace will break. So it's a protection thing, but there really is a reason for the odd number. Uh, I know that some people don't like that. I use an odd number there, but really it's, it's more of a safety issue than anything else because it keeps it from settling in between two evens. Because you know that once you crimp, you always have like a little extra room, right? You always seem to like have like these little wisps of bead stringing wire. Um, and that's, that's what you want, but I don't want to give that pendant any opportunity. So I'm going to go ahead and thread on the rest and then we're going to crimp and then we're going to attach this to the length which is our faux suede lace and some cordians, just to keep it simple. All right, okay. So now we're just gonna crimp. We're gonna thread on our crimp tube. We're gonna thread on our bead stringing wire, or our wire guardian, not our bead stringing wire. We're gonna take that wire back down through and then through our crimp. And we're gonna pull. I am stuffy. I'm very, very stuffy. I'm getting over a cold and I'm so tired of being stuffy. It's, it's not too bad during the day and I feel fine. Like the first day I didn't feel too good. Um, it's been about three days now. And, um, I, <laughs> the worst is at night, you know, cause you just can't breathe. And then you end up tossing and turning all night long and not getting a good night's rest. And, Really and truly, that's what I need is just a really good night's sleep. But I have not had one since I got this cold. All right. So I'm going to come in with my cutter tool. I'm going to trim off. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Marley Beth said I'm echoing in her house because she just figured out how to put me on the big screen. Allergy meds. I take allergy meds. This was definitely a cold, like not just allergies. I um, This was a full-blown, like virus. All right. So now this side is already done. It's on a twisted jump ring. Okay. And <clears throat> we're going to attach that to our wire guardian here in just a second, but I wanted to do one of them with you guys. So I'm going to take my piece of faux suede lace. Okay. I'm going to find the center. So I'm going to bring the ends together, find the center with our little loop here. And I'm going to take our twisted jump ring. I'm going to thread, and you can do this. You can attach the jump ring first if you want. It really doesn't make any difference. Um, but I'm going to thread that through. And then we're going to take the two ends, and we're going to take those through the loop. So we're just making a lark's head knot, right? We're just looping our ends through the loop. And then when we pull... And I'm kind of, <clears throat> I'm kind of picky about my cord laying nice and flat. OK, 
Okay. So once I get it like that, I will turn it over here to the back to ensure that it never <laughs> comes undone. And I will add a little bit of hypo cement right to the back of that. Oh, what a mess. Okay. I have the messiest hypo cement in the history of the world right now, but I also don't have time to clean it. <laughs> okay. Maybe I do. All right. So I'll put that just like right in there because that's going to be on the back. You'll never see it. It'll dry and it'll keep your knot in place. You don't have to worry that that knot's going to slip out and it will always keep your suede nice and tidy on the front. I just like it to be nice and tidy. I don't like it to be crazy. <laughs> All right. Then we're going to bring our two ends together. Okay. And include it in your kit are your cord ends. <clears throat> so we're going to bring the two ends together and you may need to trim them to make sure that they're both exactly the same length. Okay. And you're going to place those within your cord end. So we're just going to slide those in. Okay. And then you're going to push down that flap over the top of them. And then you're going to fold in the edges. And I like to start with my fingers just to get them started. And then I will come in with my pliers and flatten them down nice and tight. And it will get really, really flat. It's very, very secure. You can add some hypo cement to that if you want to, but you don't have to. I find that these cord ends are really, really strong. So I never really feel like I need to add anything extra to them. Okay, so now all we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our jump ring here. to the wire guardians on either one of our beaded pieces and we have our necklace. It's all ready to go. So on the other end of this piece that was finished ahead of time, I have my hardware. I'll show it to you. You can see. <clears throat> so there's the length of our necklace. There's our bead section. Again, very Southwestern kind of feeling. On the ends, it's just two jump rings and a clasp. We'll open this one up and attach it here. And that's it. Whoops, get that open. <laughs> Come on now. There we go. There we go. This looks really good. I know it's not the same beads, but it looks really, really good with the bracelet that we just made. Th they go together very, very well. So there's our necklace. I'll put it on a bust as soon as we finish our last, our last piece for the day. Okay. So <clears throat> the last piece for the day is all about sparkle. Now, this is another another kind of jewelry style that I love for the spring and summer. String bracelets are one of my absolute favorite things. And it's because they are so simple and so lightweight that you can wear them even when it's really, really hot. Now you can do string bracelets with no beads at all, but I love them when they have beads. So I have all of these beautiful crystal cubes. Those are going to be the beads for our bracelet two little metal beads to go on our ends and two pieces of Eslon. Okay. And the two pieces of Eslon are exactly the same length. So it doesn't matter which one you pick to start with. But what we're going to do is we're going to take one of those pieces of Eslon. We're going to come to the end. We're going to come down about four or five inches from the end. And we're going to tie an overhanded surgeon's knot. So just make your loop, bring your cord through, but bring it through twice that's going to make a little surgeon's knot. Okay. So when you pull, you're going to kind of roll that knot together and it makes a little tiny kind of barrel knot, if you will. Right. It just makes a thicker than normal knot if you had just tied an overhanded knot. Okay. Now we're going to thread on all of our crystals. Now, if you want to add things from your own stash to put in between these, you can. If you want to, you know, put little seed beads between them or something to separate them, you absolutely can. But I think they look really pretty just all in a row. So we're going to thread all of these on. 
String bracelets are great for guys as well. Um, I love men's jewelry in the summer. I really do. I feel like their jewelry <laughs> is cooler than our jewelry sometimes in the summertime. Um, and string bracelets are awesome because you can literally take a guy's favorite beads, whatever they are, or his favorite color and put like, I don't know, 20 of them on a string. And I say string, it is this nylon S, this S lon cord. Um, so it is like specialty. It's not just like random string, but waxed linen will do as well. Um, and they're just super easy to wear. They're easy to stack up. You can make them masculine. You can make them feminine. You can make them unisex. You can put letters on them. You can, you know, I mean, they're, the sky is the limit with string beads they're, or string bracelets. And they make great anklets too because they're so lightweight. But some lava beads or, um, you know, whatever their favorite gemstone is. They look really good on string bracelets. All right. So there's all of our beads. Okay. And that knot that we tied is going to hold those in place. So they're not going to fall off. We're going to do the same thing over here on the other side. We're just going to tie another one of our little overhanded double looped through surgeon's knots. Okay. And we want to pull that knot down. You can use a beading awl if you need to. You really want to pull that knot down as close to your beads as possible. Okay. All right. Now, that's basically it. <laughs> Ta-da! No, I'm just kidding. We're going to take that other piece. <laughs> It's not that easy. We're going to take our other piece of Eslon and I'm going to actually move this um, beading mat and we're going to use some painter's tape here. So I'm going to take two pieces of painter's tape because I have lost my tying station. I have no idea where it is. We're going to take our two ends. Okay, first and foremost, we're going to trim our ends so that they're the same length. It's always a good, good start here to this. So I'm going to trim off the excess on this one. Okay, so we're starting off with two ends that are the same length. We're going to take them and we're going to kind of crisscross them. One going one way and one going the other way. Okay, just like that. Now, painter's tape. Tape it down right there. And tape it down right there. Just for now, okay? So that we can take our other piece. You want to be sure it's not so tight that you can't get um, can't get your fingers underneath there, okay? So we're going to take this other piece of Eslon and we're going to do some square knots. And that is going to make a slide clasp. So this is going to be an adjustable bracelet, which also makes it super cool. So take your Eslon, find the middle, okay? And we're going to do a square knot. So I'm going to take my right hand and I'm going to create a P shape. And it's going to be going over the top of our two core wires or cords, whatever it is. Okay. The left hand side, make sure it crosses over and then goes behind and up through that P shape that you just made and pull. Now you don't want to pull this so tight that you can't, uh, you can't wiggle your cords in between there. You do want to pull it down tight, but I mean, like, don't, don't get crazy with it. Okay. Now to create a square knot, you have to do the exact same steps, but on the opposite side. So square knot actually happens in two steps. So step number two, we're making our backwards P shape with our left-handed cord. Okay. Going across the top of our two center cords. The one on the right, make sure it crosses over, but then goes behind everything and up through, if I can hold on to it. This s lon is really, really small. <laughs> really kind of slippery. Okay, there we go. Goes behind and up through that P shape that you made on the other side. Okay, and pull. So that is going to be, let's tighten that down a little bit more. Okay. That's going to be what we do. So you want to make like at least 10 square knots. Okay. 
um, just so that you've got enough that your bracelet's going to be nice and secure. So we're just going to continue that process alternating. So we're going on the right side with our P shape and pull. And we're going to go with our left side, our backwards P shape and pull. Okay. So we're just going to repeat. And what happens is once you finish your little sinnet, that's what you call a bunch of knots in a row is a sinnet. Once you finish your sinnet of knots, then we're going to tie off the ends and our cords, those two core cords will actually adjust. They'll slip and slide inside this row of our square knots and you'll be able to adjust the size of your bracelet. Was who cute? What are we talking about? <laughs> Was who cute? Who? Cute boy? Where? So funny. When I was a kid, my mom used to tell me that I was boy crazy. And I, and I was. I, I was always boy crazy. As soon as I decided that boys weren't icky, then I decided that, you know. Anyway, <laughs> now that I am single <laughs> and have been single for a while, my mom's like, ah, oh, she's just like she was when she was 11. She's boy crazy, boy crazy again. It's just like when I was a kid. <laughs> so you say cute boy and I'm. My ears perk up immediately. Where? Where? Okay. So again, 10 of these or roughly about an inch is all you're going to want of um, your square knots. That's just going to ensure that you have plenty of extra room to work with. And of course, the longer this section is, the longer your bracelet has the ability to be. Um, All right, so I'll do one more and then we're gonna finish this off, okay? Okay, so once you give yourself about an inch of the square knots, okay, we're gonna untape this from the table and we're gonna turn this over to the back, okay? Now, or whatever you want to consider the back, we're going to take the two ends of the piece that we were knotting with. Just be sure you don't accidentally use the other ones. Okay. And Tracy, he wasn't. No oh, I thought you said, <laughs> like, uh, no, not yet. We have plans though. We have plans though. I thought she said mower and I was like, the mower guy is not cute. <laughs> she definitely said mover guy. <laughs> but we talk, we talk every day. Uh, we're just friends, just friends, just friends. Okay, so I just tied an overhanded knot and pulled that knot down to the back surface of our square knots here, okay? Now what you want to do is you want to get that hypo cement back out. You just want to be really, really careful with the hypo cement. You don't want to get crazy with this because if you add too much hypo cement, then you have glued your interior cords and you lose the ability to make this bracelet adjustable. So just be careful. Okay, stick strictly to the outside and you're going to let that set for a few minutes before you trim it off. Now, while I'm letting that glue set, I'm going to take the two short ends. These are not the ones that we were knotting with. These are actually the ends of our bracelet. I'm going to thread on a metal bead. Okay, Peggy's too funny. <laughs> and I'm just going to tie an overhanded knot. Okay. You can do a double if you want to. And that's going to keep that bead on. Now, why is that necessary? Why is that bead necessary? Because that's going to keep it from slipping into, you don't want to accidentally pull your bracelet open too much and pull your ends inside your square knots. That's what that bead is for. Trim off a little bit. 
And I'm going to do the same thing over here on the other side. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing life in a whole new way, you guys. I actually bought wine and put it in my refrigerator. Like, I feel like, I feel like an adult. <laughs> like I never had wine on a regular basis in my refrigerator because uh, I was married to somebody who had a drinking problem. So I couldn't have alcohol in the house. And so... I can now. And I just recently came to that realization. I was like, Oh, watch me put wine in my refrigerator. Woohoo. <laughs> and I am a little boy crazy, but I mean, it's all good things, right? Okay. So now what we're going to do, I overshare. I'm so sorry. I'm going to, um, I'm going to trim off the excess. You just want to make sure that that glue dries. Okay. And then you want to trim off. I really kind of recommend letting it sit overnight before you trim super, super close. But look, now you have an adjustable bracelet. It's just a string bracelet, but it's a beautiful nylon string in a great color, right? And to adjust it, you just pull your ends and they're going to slide right inside those square knots love, love these. Let me know um, how you guys feel about the string bracelets because I have a huge selection of beautiful beads to make string bracelets with and I have a ton of Eslon in a bunch of really beautiful colors. Um, so if you like the slide brace or the string bracelets, we can definitely do more of this kind of design. They're super easy, but the results are really, really pretty. It's a, such a lightweight piece. It's like, I still want to be sparkly in the summertime when it's a hundred degrees outside, but I don't want the weight of jewelry. String bracelets are where it's at and they're adjustable. So if you've got customers, it's perfect because you don't have to guess about sizing, right? I think so too. Catherine says, feels like we're friends when sharing life. I agree. I, I Some people don't like that I overshare, but the rest of us get it, right? The rest of us understand, like we've all been together. The majority of us have been together for years, like as friends, this little community that we have. And um, it's not really oversharing. You guys have been on a really long journey with me. All right. So I'm just going to run back through all of our designs. I'm going to turn you guys around. Okay. Let's flip the camera around. All right. <laughs> Danielle says she likes to overshare too. I do too. I do too. I love it. All right. So we had um, earrings, right? Let's start out with our earrings. I'm not going to put them all on, but I will hold them up for you just so that you can see like in comparison to my hands, what they look like. So here are the blue Easter eggs. They're so, so pretty. So blue Easter eggs. And then we have the light blue Easter eggs. And again, feel free to adjust these kits when you get them. If you don't want to use all of that, if that's too much earring, you can definitely adjust. All right. And then we have our melon teardrops. Again, really, really pretty. We have our mismatched butterfly earrings. Love these. They're so fun. How cool are those? And those butterflies are so pretty. And these are very lightweight as well. Okay. So we have those. We have our Adventurine and Z bead bracelet with our Tierra Cast accents. Really pretty. I was going to knock over my drink. And we have our necklace here. Get this on the bust so you can see it. Pull it up just a little bit. So here is our necklace with our tiara cast pendant, highlight beads, and our silver. So pretty. And then last but not least is our string bracelet, which we just put together. Look at those crystals. They're so pretty. I have other crystals. I have more cubes. I got all the things. <laughs> I have lots of things. 
<laughs> so if you like the string, the string designs, just let me know, you know, if they sell well, I'll do some more of them. I'll make some more kits. They don't have to just be crystals. I've got some really great seashell beads that I got from Danielle. Um, I've got some flowers. I got some really cool things. So just let me know. Love these bracelets may have some more, please. Yes, you may ask and you shall receive. <laughs> All right, my friends, thank you so, so much for joining me for our Feel Good Friday show. Please don't forget to go over to my Etsy shop to purchase all of the kits that you saw in today's show. It's a great way to support me and to support uh, my business. Uh, please don't forget to go check out Danielle Wicks as well. She is also a huge support of mine. And I love her dearly. Absolutely love her to pieces. Um, she's a great designer. She's an awesome teacher. You can catch her and I both um, on the Michaels rounds of classes. Just go over to the Michaels website and you can sign up for classes. Danielle teaches several classes a month and I will be back on the roster again. I had been gone while I was moving, but I've got a class not this Saturday, but next Saturday coming up. So I'll be back in the mix with the Michaels classes again. And I'm just happy to be back in the mix with you guys in general, right? It's been, it's been too long. This has been a great Feel Good Friday show. I'm so glad that you were here to join me and uh, looking forward to all the more Feel Good Fridays we have coming up, right? Um, something for the Hardwired group. If you are part of the Hardwired group, I'm going to take like a five minute break, just a five minute break. And then we're going to hop on right away and do our uh, weekly wrap up. I don't have a project plan, but we are going to get together and chat for a little bit. And um, yeah, so just don't, don't forget we're doing that early today. So five minute recess and I'll see Hardwired group here in just a little bit. The rest of you guys have a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Enjoy your weekend. I'll take pictures tonight so you can see all the fun. And uh, I'll see you guys next week on Tuesday with another fun show. I love you guys. Bye.